You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. Hello and welcome to Fellowship in Essential Oils. And I do apologize for torturing you with a bit of my singing, but it just felt relevant because today we're talking about lemon, Liz. Not warning me you're going to sing. <laughs> I think that could easily get like busted on copyright because it sounded so much like the original. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're too kind. You're too kind. <laughs> So, uh, yes, yeah. lemon. And I, and I just said, didn't I, Adam? I think it's a bit short because I don't use lemon very much at all. And I like it. I like it a lot, but I don't use it very much. So hopefully people will put things in the comments and say, but what about this? I use it for this. And really sort of pad out my lack of knowledge right today. <laughs> yeah, I must admit, it's actually probably the first essential oil I use every morning. No way. Yeah, for you know, for me, let's start off with how I use it. I, I like it for two reasons, um, and these are the physical, but they also kind of go into the emotional and even the spiritual. I love it for its detoxification pro um, properties. So I love to, you know, our body's obviously been yearning and churning throughout the night, so it's nice just to give it a kind of a final blast out um, at the end, of, you know, in the start of the morning. And it obviously, being a citrus, elevates the mood. So. How do how better to start the day than to clean out all the rubble from the night before and to kind of start joyous? So lemon is probably the first oil that comes out of my expansive oil box every morning. So I have I a good relationship with it. I don't need it. I don't have rubble. Rubble in the night. I don't have rubble. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, do you know we've said this before, haven't we? we? We've all got these clicks of oils that we use. And it's not that I don't dislike it because I do really like lemon. And when mm. I think of like recipes it always goes in but it's just like whatever there's only one thing i can think of that i can't match it for and we'll talk about that afterwards but everything else i can go yeah use it for that no it's a better oil use it for that no i like that oil better then it's funny how yeah. it works like that isn't it i probably guess you know if we're looking at the aromas of them if you're to pit lemon against you know tangerine or um, lime or lemon there are a lot of probably slightly sweeter smells that might kind of compete, whereas lemon is a bit, you know, it, it's got a lemony scent. It's, it's a bit more, we're talking, we've talked about other citrus being tart and things, but yeah, maybe it just doesn't win in the um, aromatic com compartment. So that's why we don't use it as much. I think I don't use it that much because I use lemons so much. Mm, so I yeah. cook with lemons a lot. I clean with lemons. There's, there's lemons everywhere all the time in our house. I love lemons. So maybe my body goes, you don't really need that. You've got lemons, yeah. perhaps, yeah. Yeah. So we were chatting before, and you found, you've been finding some interesting uses for lemon. So tell us, what is lemon good for? What can we use it for if we've got our lemon? Well, I mean, I think you're absolutely right that from the point of view of mood, absolutely fantastic I'll, i mean i'll i'll, I'll address that di separately because there's some really interesting stuff about how it affects mood but um anti antiseptic antibiotic antiviral mum always used to make this fantastic sinus cream and it was in the days before people knew what what aromatherapy was really and they come to this the they go you want you rub lavender on your head for a headache how's that going to work and you do you say well, I'm swallowing a tablet work. Surely rubbing something on your head makes more sense than that. But with the sinus, you could have such a fast response to people are like, whoa, throwing money over the counter. And the secret recipe was lemon myrrh tea tree. The myrrh would just absolutely make all of the sinuses pour out. And the lemon is so good for clearing out any kind of underlying infection. Um, and so, you know, even if somebody's got like a, a cold, absolutely fantastic for stuffy nose. But also one of the things that underlies uh, acne and in these are these like pages and pages of how do you treat acne? People look at the obvious things of what's happening on the skin. But one of the worst things that can happen to cause acne is sinus congestion. And so it can have this tremendous uh, sort of back back uh, room effect on the sinus because it gets rid of all the congestion. And it does, it really pours out of you, I will warn you. Um, and of course, the sinuses, there are four 
they're like the tracks are like empty caves i always think so by the time you've got a stuffy nose that is well and truly stuffed to the max mm. there's a lot to come out uh and lemon is lemon and myrrh together are, are tremendous for that um what's really interesting is it has an effect on anxiety and on pain um but rodent trials suggest that men and women might experience it differently so i thought that was really interesting so the like the sort of textbook um example of this was they did an experiment one of those horrible experiments where they put the mice's feet on the hot plate and they look for inflammation basically um, and what they were able to prove was that the lemon didn't do anything to the ma male rats at all, but the female ones were less frightened of it. And it took longer for them to actually have like an inflammatory response as well. So their tolerance wow. was better for it. And it sug they're suggesting that potentially this may happen in women as well, that not only will it help their anxiety, but it will stop their fear of 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 pain so if somebody has is like doing some kind of rehabilitation after like w trying to walk on bad ankles or stuff like that then tremendous and of course we know that lavender is very good for stopping people worrying about falling over so those two work really really well in that kind of tandem we were just joking about cleaning I uh, had a, had an instance this morning where I thought the gas engineer was going to go, no, you can't use that cooker anymore. It's a disgrace. And uh, Adam said, you know what I need? You needed another? No, yes, I did need some lemon, but I hadn't got any, but I used some orange. Because limonene is so good for cleaning, cuts through grease, and uh, I saved the cooker. So, yeah, I used orange. Oh, God, I can't talk about it. Oh, <laughs> um, so yeah, so of course there's like lots of levels to that. So if you're cleaning a surface, then it cuts through the grease, but so many nasties in terms of germs and funguses that it picks up. So if you go through the trials, you've got you, you can see oh it's this fungus that grows on cucumbers, this fungus that grows. Are on or, or, or like cereal products, and you're thinking, I'm never gonna eat again. <laughs> it's a rock thing. But uh, lemon is really good for all of that cleaning, as well as things like E. coli, Streptococcus, um, Staphylis or, uh, sta aureus. I can't say the whole world. <laughs> so, all of those things are really, really good. So, I'll stop there before I go into the mental and emotional. And what do you use it for? Yeah, so apart, you reminded me of another one, apart from the detoxification and the helping with the mood being my main two, you do find lemon in a lot of respiratory blends. And, you know, the obvious ones would be, you know, maybe a eucalyptus, maybe a peppermint, maybe, you know, laurel and ravensar and those other ones that have the 1-8 cineol in them. But that aspect of um, lemon being really good as especially an anti-anxiety, and I know there's a – is it an, an elixolytic or something? Anxiolytic. Antiolytic, that's the one, anti-anxiety. <laughs> and when you think about it, you know, one of the scariest things, I know I've had an instance once where, like, I couldn't breathe properly, almost like an asthma attack kind of thing. It's horrifying and not being able to breathe, almost, you know, it's like a vicious circle of you're like, oh, I can't breathe, so I'm freaking out, I'm freaking out, so I'm not breathing. And so it's a really, it's not one I think most people would think lemon for respiratory, but I think it's a really good addition when that's, you know, if that's a challenge. Well, do you know what? There was an interesting. Now, I haven't, I haven't gened up on this to give you good details, but there's a tremendous um, trial. Can't remember the year. Can't remember who did it. Any of that salient detail. But there was a tremendous um, study done on the effects of essential oils on respiratory and how that affected mood. And so, how there was a link between those, and I'm sure that anybody who just like breathing will say well of course of course there's, you know but they were able to really pinpoint areas where the essential oils were touching the respiratory system and that was impacting on mood so you're absolutely right yeah well makes sort of sense if you think about any time when you know if we are angry if we are sad if we are stressed if we are 
any of those unwanted low vibration negative emotions, what happens to our breath? We, it shortens. And what's the one bit of advice we say is just breathe. So the fact that lemon works in that way and then works through to we're about to talk about mental and emotional, yeah, it all kind of ties in that just starting in the morning, breathing in a bit of lemon, popping a drop in your hands or in the diffuser and just taking a few whiffs, I think is a really lovely way to kind of commence the day, um, especially as the sun comes up. And I find that lemon has a really strong connection to the sun. Um, one thing that's been coming up a lot in the classes I've been teaching recently is we are the only species on this entire planet that ignores the cycles of the sun. Every other animal will change its behavior when the sun comes up and sun goes down. There's obviously nocturnal animals and that type of thing. And plants will change their behavior as well. But apart from us flicking on the lights, we just carry on. And no wonder humans have problems sleeping and different things like that. So I think a really nice signaling to the brain, getting up. And I read a really great article on the, um, the advantages of getting up as the sun's coming up and actually changing your schedule. Um, and a lot of um, indigenous cultures really live by that. Of um, They say that if you stay in bed while the sun's coming up, all the energy that's kind of starting to move around will go into little dark corners. And if you're not moving, it'll come into you and that's why you wake up all creaky, which is a really interesting kind of, you know, concept kind of thing of why, why to get up with the sun. And there is a beautiful energy. And I think lemon ties in really nicely with that start of the day. Of yeah, and funnily enough, actually, that really kind of echoes some work that I was doing on a, a contract piece of ghostwriting this week about essential oils for depression. So... um I think it's the 10th of the of September is International Suicide Awareness Day. And mm. the levels of depression are rise, rising exponentially. I mean, they were climbing before COVID, but they're off the chart now. And I think that the, it was an American company that asked me to do it. And I'm sure the statistic was that 27% of American people say that they have suffered for, from depression at some point in their lives and 17% say they are depressed, treated for or experiencing symptoms of depression right now. And so, you know, these oils, we, you, we, we kind of just say, oh, they're uplifting, but in 2021, a person committed suicide in the US every 11 seconds. Wow. And the problem being that people, even people who have got um, medical insurance, a lot of the medical insurance doesn't cover any kind of um, mental health. It's physical health only. Um, a large percentage, can't remember the, the statistic, but a, a, a much bigger percentage of the people who are suffering depression are women and young people um and of course these are and and actually sorry i should say people uh people of color these are a lot of the people that were on the front line on the lower paid uh, jobs in covid and so they're also suffering from exhaustion and to be treated in the states for depression costs ten thousand dollars a year and so that's like including medications, including, um, you know, therapies, talking therapies. So to have really good care is really, really expensive. And I think the statistic was that 19% of Hispanic people don't have any medical insurance to cover all of this. So people are really, really struggling. And I mean, how much is a bottle of lemon oil? Probably about eight to ten dollars, I would have thought, doing the maths in terms of uh, uh, um, American. Um, and so the difference of that in comparison to I've got to go and get all this therapy, inhaling something that is going to infect, affect neurotransmission, which it does, can be really, really helpful. So we know that inhaling essential oils affects the nervous system by activating neurotransmitters. And the strange reason is, and I never really can get my mind around this, is that the olfactory receptors are what actually generate, sorry, olfactory neurons are what actually express neurotransmitters. They are what express GABA for example, and some of the um, receptors will co-express. So not only GABA, but also serotonin, also dopamine. 
also um, noradrenaline, oxytocin, estrogen. We talk about this a lot, don't we, especially the oxytocin and estrogen. But we know that the reason why um, lemon is so good for, for stabilizing mood, and I say stabilizing, not just uplifting, stabilizing mood, is because it interacts directly with the serotonergic system. Serotonin is specifically the um, HG, sorry, HG1A receptor, which is a really strong and useful serotonin receptor, but also the dopamine receptor. It's unusual you see the, the both. And dopamine is really important in terms of depression, but also things like um parkinson's disease schizophrenia because if it's not like a turnover of dopamine in the brain in the hypothalamus um if it's influenced by the hippocampus and the um, amygdala if there's not a turnover of dopamine what you have is this an 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 hedonism so hedonism of course is feeling joy in life feeling excitement in life kind of the color in life if you haven't got that then that joy goes out, the excitement goes out, and everything starts to look a bit dark and grey. So actually smelling essential oils that can interact with the dopamine receptor, of which lemon is one, really moves that and makes the neurons start to make, uh, starts neurogenesis, which is uh, which really is associated with antidepressant action. So that's really, really important and easy for people to do. So we can't say that we can prove, dep- uh, prove that we can cure depression. Of course we can't. But if you can't afford to get to the doctors, and most people, a lot of people are saying, I can't afford to do it, I bet you can afford to get a bottle of uh, lemon oil. And if you can't get a bottle of lemon oil, get a lemon and just rub it. Put it on your hands because that's that's all it is. It's just that juice of the lemon onto your hands and inhale it for around about 10 minutes a day, twice a day. And you may not see um, actions immediately, but as we know, these the actions of essential oils are cumulative, so they build over time. And personally, I would expect to see some real difference in about three weeks and a month or to a month. And I think it's really helpful medicine to know that. I think, I think so. And I would encourage everyone to do that in a way because a lot of the time what, what, what I love about essential oils is using essential oils doesn't just have to be reactive. Don't wait till you're having a bad time. Why not You know, get into the habit of using lemon on a regular basis? And what a beautiful thing to maybe even – we know that 10 minutes of sunlight on the arms every morning – gives you enough, you know, allows the body to create enough vitamin D for the day. Can you find 10 minutes a day in the early morning before the sun's too hot to get outside in the sunlight, smell your lemon? What a beautiful way to start the day that's going to have the, you know, the mood effects, the emotional effects, the vitamin D. It could be a really nice ritual that people could get into. Just be careful, though. Remember that lemon is phytotoxic. So don't yeah. stick it onto your, onto your arms in the um in your hands um at that time of day. You know we don't want to. If you've got reactive skin, that that's a recipe for disaster. But you know if you've got your bottle of oil or you've got your little sniffy stick or on a piece of tissue, and as and, and as Adam says, get your t-shirt on, get your skin onto the under the sun, makes such a difference. I think. As we've been talking about depression as well, I know another oil that's kind of um, renowned for support with that is jasmine. I think uh, for me, it's just echoing my head. It would be a really nice duet. I think jasmine and lemon, they're very different kind of note, um, you know, aromas. But I think together it could be quite intriguing. Very, very gorgeous. In fact, it's one of my favourite blends. And, ah. and actually, they have similar actions on weight loss as well uh Mm. and so we will talk about this when we when they do the master class i'm not going to get into it too much but we know that that lemon inhaling lemon stimulates the sympathetic nervous system and now and i will just come back to that point in a minute stimulates the nervous system so that the um send it sends messages to the down the gastric nerve to adipose tissue 
and it says start burning up the adipose tissue, start burning fat. And we'll talk about that more in the grapefruit um, lesson because it's really involved in grapefruit, but lemon does it. And uh, mm. jasmine also has an effect on weight loss. And so how wonderful to be like investing that time in feeling better, reducing your anxiety, but also and get rid of it, maybe get a few bangs off my waist as well. You know, I think it's amazing stuff. There's a well spent about, 10 minutes. Exactly. I mean, it's such an investment of time, isn't it? Um, mm. I just want to return to the fact that it does increase the sympathetic nervous system not the parasympathetic and the, and so the reason why i say that is when you're talking about like having a bit of a not, not a panic attack but like a nervy effect and not being able to breathe then just be aware that if you inhale something that does that you might kind of get like oh it's going mm. faster so traditionally in those kinds of situations we would usually use things like frankincense and betty bear because they go slower but you're absolutely right, that uplifting, more positive kind of feeling of like, oh, I'm just getting away from that fear at the moment for some people will really work. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Now, when, when we look at the astrology of different essential oils, so citrus has kind of had this overall ruling of um, the sun. The sun generally kind of scooped up all the citrus and go, right, you're mine. And we may argue that, you know, Mandarin might belong with a little bit of the moon and I like tangerine a bit with Jupiter. But overall, I think that, you know, um, the sun has the domain over the citruses. When it comes to lemon, I believe there is no oil in the citrus range that is closer to the energy of the sun than um, than lemon. What I love, you know, when we think about the sun, the sun has a dual effect. The sun gives life and it takes away life. It helps to bring light to our world, but also it can, you know, too much sun burns us. We see what happens when there's you know, not enough rain and that out of balance as well. And I find Lemon is really good for helping us to, um, as we talked about with the physical, it's a detoxifying essential oil. So it helps to get rid of the darkness in our life. Wherever the light shines there, or wherever the sun shines, there can be no darkness. So we can use lemon on that energetic level to get rid of all the things we've been talking about. Any negativity, any worry, any self-doubt, any negative self-talk, I think lemon is absolutely brilliant for. And at the same time, it allows your wings to unfurl. It allows you to kind of elevate up and, you know, being yellow, it works really well with the sacral chakra. It allows that light to shine. So, you know, a word I love for lemon is brilliance. It allows your brilliance to shine. And a lot of the time what's stopping our brilliance from shining is ourselves or something kind of holding our feet down. And I, this is where lemon, I think, whenever we have self-doubts or, or anything like that. But also I think after times of hardship, or even after times of sickness, I almost get this visual with lemon of it's like flinging the curtains open and the sun coming in. So I think it's a really beautiful one for connecting in with that sun energy astrologically wise, but also the sun within us. And I'm reminded, you know, talking about the chakras, I was once asked to teach a chakra workshop to spiritually interested nine to 12 year olds. And I was like, okay, I'm up for that. I don't normally teach kids as, um, in that kind of realm but how do i describe each of the chakras i was kind of a little bit proud of myself on how i worked out the solar plexus one i explained it's like our inner sun because when the energy is low in that chakra we hide the sun away we don't show anyone our sun we're shy and sometimes there's too much energy we blind people with that light and we just want our sun to shine beautifully and to show people that we are confident and we are proud and we want everyone else's sun to shine as well and I think lemon is that real epitome of allowing us to get rid of anything that's holding us back in our lives, within and around us, and also to allow us to shine as well. I like it. I like it a lot. Um, so we, we jump forward, really, before I said what I wanted to say. <laughs> well, let's go back then and say what you want to say. <laughs> so it makes it look like I don't know what I'm talking about now. <laughs> but I wanted to talk about Lemon on the mental faculties. Yes, 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 yes. So I, yes. I don't, so I was thinking, could I trick the situation then and say that I thought it was like a brow chakra or a, or a throat chakra thing? And, and I don't. I agree with you. It's entirely solar plexus medicine, entirely sun medicine. But 
there there has been some tremendous research done on what lemon does to the mental faculties and two bringing together two fantastic trials i think so the the first one it might have both been on you use, can't remember, but the first one was certainly university um, subjects. And they did all sorts of tests to see how it affected the brain in terms of doing different tests. So, for example, um, yeah, because the reason why, yes, because when I read it, I thought it was old people, but it wasn't, it was young people. They were doing like matching up pairs. Can you remember where the pairs are? Yeah. Um, yep. And so they did all sorts of different sort of mental tests like that. And they were able to show that you're, you you think more clearly, you think more creatively, you remember more and you concentrate more with um, lemon. So that's really interesting. But the really interesting one was a different task uh, uh, experiment. They said, yes, all of those things are true, but you also make decisions faster and you make decisions at the expense of accuracy. So I thought this is like quite an important thing for people to know, because when we're thinking about what we do for um, doing like what oils we use for revision and stuff like that, it might be a fantastic oil for revision. It's not a great oil to take into your exam because it's going to stop you thinking things through as clearly as you would. Mm. So I thought that was really fascinating to see how cleverly and how like neatly they package things. So like things like um, arithmetic processing was better, being able to remember spelling and stuff was back better. But what they said when it came to decision making, yes, you made much faster decisions, but it was at the extent of, of accuracy. So, that is so interesting. Oh, no, Yes, yeah, so don't say, go, just jump on to astrology next on. time. I'm like, cut me off. <laughs> well, I was thinking, you know, when you're talking about um, being a bit impulsive, yeah. it's maybe maybe what I'm about to talk about is that's why I've dived in, is, you know, obviously the sun rules the sign of Leo. Now, on the axis, there's the Leo and the opposite sign in the zodiac is Aquarius. And how I often talk about them is I say, Leos are act now, think later, whereas Aquarians are think now, have a bit more of a think, think a bit more, and we might get round to doing it eventually type of thing. And it's interesting that that lemon could be really good if we do find that we are. And remember that your astrology, as you dive into it, it's not just your zodiac or your tower or sun sign. That's the black and light outline of you. When you were born, Mercury was in a sign and Venus was in a sign and Mars was in a sign, and that colours you in. And so some people that I do astrological readings for, they might be born as, say, a Leo, but all their other planets were hanging out maybe in Scorpio and Cancer, and that's why they're really heart-based, or maybe they're all in Earth signs. So that comes in. So if you find that maybe you are a bit too Aquarian or you do kind of hesitate a little bit, then Lemon might be a good one to bring that Leo energy in. But if you've got a lot of Leo energy, I've dated someone who had a Leo, Sun, Moon, and Mercury, <sighs> um, and probably Lemon needs to be kept away from them. Exactly. And, and that was that was beautifully done. Beautifully done, may I say. And I absolutely agree. That is that is it, isn't it? The lion jumping in. So yeah. actually, so changing the subject completely, because now we talked about lions jumping in. I've got to tell you a story that's so unrelated to Lemon, it's untrue. But so I live quite close to a safari park. And uh, we've recently had a rule change. At, with, sounds boastful. No, our car is a convertible car. And we're not allowed to go to the safari park anymore because there was this lion, this female lion, who decided it's quite hot. I'm quite bored. I think I'm going to stir things up. So she started running over the top of the cars and taking the other females with her and the males over the top. And just when you were saying running right in, I was thinking about those, those lions. And there was a, a lady in the car and she got two really small children and she was only she was quite young herself i think she was 23 24 and she got these two little kids and she said i just kept saying isn't this exciting and i kept thinking i would have been saying <laughs> but so that, that it's a difference in the perception of leo energy isn't it as well you know yeah. how great how great for that oh i don't think i would like that you know so it's worth yes. weighing that up as well in terms of your lemon oil how how do you feel about that impulsiveness you know where's it going to take you 
and, and it's about, I guess, it's about getting that balance. And we all know on, on where we are on that scale, whether we're more wait now and think about it for a long time and not and probably overthink it compared to those that just dive straight in. And Lemon probably pushes us more towards let's get into the action. I want to take you back. We're all over the place now with Lemon. Um, I know, right? We're not very really hey, are we? We're, we're being very Leo. It's all about us. And it doesn't matter what everyone wants and what order there is. Um, so we're talking about study and that it can help with that, but that impulsiveness. So would you then kind of, if you were making a blend to diffuse for study, would you then be bringing in something like rosemary, like Spanish sage, like basil, and combine it with lemon? Do you think that would make it a better kind of study blend? I just think you really need to know what's going on with yourself when you're studying, don't you? Mm. So not everybody's mm. the same. For me, if my brain is like going too fast, then I'm rubbish. You know, I need to have quite slow brain waves to be able to do. So I would use something like better Yeah. When I do use a uh, lemon is when I've got writer's block. Yep. And when I'm editing my work and I go, that ah, crikey, that's so boring. I don't, uh, nobody's going to want to read that. Because I think that it's really a very creative oil. So depending on what you're studying, I'm not sure that, I mean, even though it helps at mathematical pro, programming, uh, processing, I would have thought, in fact, I know for, for, for truth that the one oil that helps make the mathematical processing is Melissa. So those two would be really good together. If, you, if you're studying to, re, struggling to remember things, then rosemary. If you're study, struggling to focus, then probably peppermint. So it's kind of just thinking about what is the problem I'm facing here. Um, yeah. But the other thing that I can say, and I can't, I don't know if this has got any research backing it up or not. I can't remember where I got it from. But Dexter's work really improves when his pencils have been shoved into uh, lemon oil. He's got quite bad dyslexia. Um, and so it's quite a positive thing that if you can do this. Just have a go. Just have a go, you know. Um, and so if you use like unvarnished pencils and stick them in into essential oil, they obviously have that beautiful smell as they're writing. And he does really well when he has lemon on his, on his pencils. That just sounds rude. I don't know what. To... <laughs> and don't put lemon on that pencil. <laughs> but he does. Oh, now, if you can't get unvarnished pencils and that's something you want to do, sharpen the pencil because that exposes the wood and then the wood saturates up. Yeah, I think, you know, we've kind of, and I'm going to go off on another tangent now, but for obviously people that are watching or listening to these, you've got a deeper appreciation of aromatherapy because you're willing to listen to us for at least half an hour a week um, bang on about aromatherapy. So you're not a beginner. Um, a lot of the time, there's not, you know, you'll find what is the best oil for depression? What is the best oil? This is the best study blend. What is the best that? that. I think you do have to take it to the next level of what's the individual. I, on a weekly basis, have people come to me and say things like, what's good for autoimmune disorders? Or a big one I get is, what's good for kids on the spectrum? And what I say is, that depends. That's like asking what oils are good for redheads. You've got to look at what is the individual need and, and look at more the symptoms or the actual challenge. Like you said, lots of people have problems with study, but why? Is it because they're overthinking? Is it because they're not thinking enough? Is it because they're getting distracted? All those different types of things. So just think about that is don't dive into the ultimate. There is no ultimate study blend, ultimate something blend. What Dig a little bit deeper on what's the real solution and can we match the oil to that? Yeah, I think that's absolutely right. I mean, that that's the basis of holistic aromatherapy, isn't it? That, that you know, we're thinking about the mind, the body and the spirit. Hmm. I know it's, when we were talking about depression earlier, I know that, in the UK now, rather than pushing you towards antidepressants, they'll push you towards th talking therapies first. Um, and one of the, the sort of like a blended approach of three different um, therapies, and one of those is interpersonal um, therapy. And that's about addressing what's going on with the relationships that you, that you have. Um, and so because that can be a real deep part, can't it, of um, of depression that you fell out with somebody or that the relation or you're not seeing your children or, or whatever. And so, yeah, you of course, you can use uplifting essential oils then. But looking deeper at things like, as you say, black pepper 
is very good for well I'm going to do this for me and I you know I know I'm a carer but I'm going to do stuff for me and, and like being able to look at those more individual challenges than just right we're just upload uh, uplifting the um the the mood but of course that comes from seeing a really good aromatherapist you know we can talk here about how to use essential oils but if if i don't think it's possible on your own to do the job as well as seeing an experienced aromatherapist and i'll, and I'll mm. put that out there because Apart from anything else, it's really difficult to be objective about what's going on in your life to me, to make, be able to make those recommendations about essential oils. So definitely use your oils, experience, experiment yourself. But but just like sometimes I have to go and see a massage therapist or, or a different kind of therapist, there will be points where you think, I just can't do this on my own. Um, and, and that's when people like me who are experienced in the holistic side are really useful. Yeah, for sure. So true. It's, um, you know, w- w- just to give you a bit of behind the scenes knowledge, before we actually started recording, we said, oh, Lemon, we'll probably bang through this one quickly. And now we're off on all tangents. We'll be here for two hours. But um, one thing I kind of got really obsessed with on the weekend is the new series on um, Netflix about the Blue Zones, which are five regions around the world where there's an unproportionate amount of people living over 100. And this researcher looked at oh. why are people living. It's really, really interesting. It's... Um, some- if you look up blue zones, if you're on, if you have Netflix, it would be on there about blue zones and living to a hundred kind of thing. You'll find it. You're going to say um, Sicily, but, aren't you? You always see old people around where the lemons are. Uh, no, 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 Sicily. There was two. There was uh, Icaria in, um, in uh, that's in Greece, isn't it? Um, and Sardinia were the other two in Europe. Another one in Okinawa in Japan. Um, one in Costa Rica and one actually in a place called. Um, oh, Going blank now, Linda Loma or something, which is actually in the United States, which is right. a, a quite a seven day adventure area. Very different population, but he found common trends. And one of the trends that was very, very important was the um, the importance of your social network. And in Japan, they call it your uh, your moai, which is a supportive group of like minded people that is kind of like your friend group, and that you are more likely to. Um, to pick up the health habits and the well-being habits of the, of your friends. So if your friends smoke, you'll probably smoke. If they drink, you'll drink. If they're overweight, you'll probably be overweight as well. And so even that looking at how we're feeling emotionally and working with lemon, it can be quite interesting because sometimes we might work with lemon in a more magical way to go, are the people around me, are my moai actually lifting me up or are they weighing me down? And lemon, if I had to give lemon an animal, I'd give it the eagle because the eagle flies so close to the sun. And, you know, it could be a really nice one if you're kind of looking at what do I need to adjust in my life? You know, maybe you need to change, look at your social interactions and get out there a little bit more. And Lemon could help you on that magical level of even attracting um, a better moai or a better, more supported group that does lift you up rather than hold you down. Did you say one of the places in Greece was Ikaria? Yes, it was. Named, yeah. after, named after Icarus that flew too close to the sun. Oh, yeah. Very, um, very good. Uh, yeah, so on the... We're so off Lemon now. So off it. <laughs> <laughs> we really do need the producer to go, it's enough now, you're off. But in that um, study about uh, depre- uh, depression, one of the things that they were saying was obviously lockdown has made depression worse which didn't take a, an academic to um, to prove that but what they said was they'd been able to prove how much social time somebody needed to be happy mm. um, and they they were they proved 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 yeah. they proved that young people need more than old people old people need about three hours a week Young people don't really start to get that antidepressant kind of effect until about six hours with their peers each week. So if you are at home and you're feeling down, that might be something to think about. Um, And if you're nervous about going outside, the best oil for social anxiety is lavender. Same, Same deal. Inhale the lavender and try and go and see some friends because, again, that has a really big bearing on depression 
And I'm guessing, and also from my own experience being here in the Middle East, which is very different to what I'm used to being back in Australia, um, my, I'm, I'm probably not getting my six hours a week, which is interesting because um, I'm considering myself as young. Um, it's me, you are young, three. <laughs> oh, thank you, thank you. Bloody I'll get you everywhere. Um, but I'm, I, I'm guessing as well that that has to be in-person interaction. It's not on-screen interaction You know, as well. that was, well, that wasn't explained. That's fine. I, I wondered that because whether it's clear or not, I have one that never, he's like, Miss Havisham, the mad aunt in the attic, he hardly ever comes down. And so he just interacts with his friends on WhatsApp all of the time and he's perfectly happy. So mm. I don't know whether it's in person. I don't know if it's outside in the sun either, but it was just saying that this social interaction was important. Got you, got you. One thing, I'm going to loop back to something you said about half an hour ago now. You said that in the studies that, you know, a larger proportion was like women and younger people and Hispanics and that were found with depression. I do wonder, my, my, my few years at doing psychology at uni does make me kind of wonder, was it because they're more likely to seek help than, the, than men? I don't know. It could be. But do you mean like men no, were kind of hard enough? This, this was even, this was a, 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 you know, the I don't know how common it is, the Gallup poll. We used to talk about the Gallup polls a lot when we were younger. So this is mm. not like a medical um, intervention. It was done for the government and it was a, a set of 100,000 people gave the like the percentage. So in within that, it was I feel depressed and or I am getting treatment. So it wasn't necessarily about whether they uh, approached a medical mm. professional. And a lot of them had said, well, I, I'm not going to approach a medical professional because I can't afford it. Yep. So, and I think maybe the difference is as much about one of the comments that they made was that, first of all, the women made up, I can't remember what the percentage was, but I think it was something like 84% of the healthcare professionals on the front line. Um, and of course, like you've got like uh, checkout chicks and cleaners. And so that was really scary for people on the front line, but also um, speaking as a mother of one, the sheer level of exhaustion of the healthcare professionals is still going on. You know, there's still lots of people off sick who are suffering from exhaustion, from being from the stress um, and from the fear of actually getting the infection. Um, but also not so much for uh, for the NHS, but for people in shops and stuff, the 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 women, Hispanics, and young people are uh, statistically more likely to be made to be got rid of for their jobs mm, uh, yeah. and their jobs as well and then of course we have hormones is the other thing yeah. you know we there's it didn't like delineate for like menstrual cycles or for menopause but we have to acknowledge that those are definite factors for depression yeah wow I'm well i think i've lost of course I, I i've learned three things today i think one i've learned some things about lemon Two, I think we've got to stop saying this will be a quick one because we jinx ourselves and we just go off on tangent. And three, we probably should try and find a producer to keep us on track. But hopefully <laughs> everyone who's tuned in today has found today insightful. And if you want to go off on tangents or if you want to keep us on track, that's what the masterclass is for. That's when you actually get to interact with us. The next one is on October the 5th. Um, we're going to be diving into six different essential oils, but there's also a massive Q&A section where you can ask us absolutely anything to do with essential oils and aromatherapy as well. Is there anything at all that we've forgotten to mention about lemon or the meaning of life in our discussion today, Liz? Yes. Put lemon neat on warts, undiluted onto warts, but don't get it onto the rest of the skin because it burn it. But it, it's the best thing possible for warts. Um, yeah, and the other thing about masterclass is just to say the Q&A happens at the beginning. So don't think you've got to sit through hours and hours and hours of lectures and then maybe there won't be time for your question. If you Even if you just want to come along, ask a question and get lost, then that's fine by us. But I have to say, I think you will really enjoy hanging out. So we've talked quite a lot about um, the effects of of, of on the nervous system so we have got sort of three main areas we're going to talk about this week uh, this month 
that is the effect of stress on the body, in particular the, the liver. We're going to talk about how to use essential oils for weight loss. And there was something else, and I got, oh, and yours, what was your... <laughs> What was yours again? I'm going to talk. I'm going to talk about the moon, um, and I'm going to talk about um, that each moon throughout the year has a bit of a flavour, and how we could possibly work with each moon differently, and maybe select different oils for the full moons as well. So we're going to we'll we'll have a bit of that very practical. We'll lo we'll look at losing weight, and we'll look at the moon as well. So that's the the eclectic nature of hopefully what you've got used to here on Fellowship in Essential Oils over the last. We've done over 20 episodes now. Time flies. It does. Mm. Amazing. But thank you very much for spending time with us this week. We will see you again next week when we dive into another essential oil. Until then, of course, as I seem to say every week now, take care of yourself, take care of each other, and take care of Mother Earth because she grows lemon trees and lemon oil is good. Bye-bye. <laughs>